Welcome to another episode of Waters Ironworks. Uh, today we're going to be talking about coal uh, forges and um, some stuff that I bought to build a new coal forge. So what I've got here is the Centaur Forge uh, 12 inch mini fire pot kit. This goes for 320 ish dollars plus some shipping. Um, and I want to show you guys what you get with that kit. Um, what what I like about it, the one complaint I've got about it, um, and then also talk about how this compares against a very common um, homemade sort of fire pot uh, that one of these is actually replacing out at Pioneer Farms, um, and, and kind of the advantages and disadvantages of uh, both of them. So let's take a look at what you get um, with this kit. Obviously, first you do get the fire pot itself. This is made out of some pretty heavy duty steel here, um, nice and thick. So you don't have to worry about this getting hot and melting through or anything like that. These things hold up um, absolutely great and even some pretty tough conditions. I've got these, um, like I said, out at Pioneer Farms and they get rain on them. Sometimes they get abused by uh, students who, you know, a lot of people first time ever forging using these things and um, I've been extremely uh, happy with how well they've pulled up and a lot of it is because they are so thick and heavy duty. So we get the fire pot, we get the twir, and we'll put this thing together so that you guys can see it. Um, I went with the dumping ash grate. I think these are much easier to use than the sliding ash grate. Um, very easy to install and put on and we have a clinker breaker here. So as we put this thing together, it's super, super simple. We'll flip it over, clinker breaker, comes in like that, the twir goes on it. There's a couple bolts here that hold it down. I like to put these with the bolt heads on the bottom of the fire pot. Make sure all this is lined up. And the reason I do this is I don't want them sticking up into the bottom of the fire. Um, the, the fire is going to get hot. Having these bolt heads up there, uh, A, it'll give stuff a uh, spot for clinker and things to hold on to. Um, in the bottom of your fire and B, it can potentially melt the bottom of the bolt heads. So if we do them from the bottom, you can see they're designed to come flush right there. Nice and smooth. And then for the ash dump here, And I've done this backwards. Um, I'll fix that off camera so that you can see it. Uh, you can see ash dump is on one side, clinker breakers on the other. Those should be on the same side. So let me fix that um, and I'll be right back with you. We've uh, got this turned around. So both our ash dump and our um, clinker breaker are on the same side. That is an important uh, way to have this. So um, you guys saw, I mean, th these things are dead simple to put together and you've got a working fire pot here that is um, excellent. I, I love these fire pots. Let me talk to you about the, the two things that um, I do wish were a little different. One of them is uh, very simple. One of them, um, you need a welder. Uh, to do. So the first is um, your clinker breaker here. This handle is a little short. The forges that we built out at the farm um, wind up coming up to about here. And so if you want to use this clinker breaker, you've got to reach up under the forge frame. It's a little awkward, uh, but that's easy enough, right? We will take some 3 8 inch rod. We'll make a new one of these when we're putting the forge together so that it comes out a little bit farther. That is no problem at all. The slightly more challenging difficulty is the setup right here. 
Um, you've got a flat face that you need to attach a pipe or something to so that you've got hose coming off of it. What we've found the easiest thing to do is get a piece of um, steel that you can mesh up here, drill some holes in it, and then weld a pipe onto it so that you've got something for your hose assembly to come and latch onto. I really wish Centaur Forge sold something like that so that it was a little bit easier to directly hook a hose up onto this. Um, but other than that, this is a, an excellent uh, fire pot. I've got um, five or six of these um, in use. Uh, just bought two more of them. I'm switching over everything we have that is not one of these uh, to one of these fire pots because I do like them so much. And let's talk about why that is. Let's compare that to a very popular style of homemade fire pot and this is one that we've actually been using for a number of years out there uh, the lead blacksmith before me uh, made this and, and he did a pretty good job with it the design is a brake rotor from a, a car welded onto some square pipe some uh, tube coming out there the clinker breaker for this if we can get a shot in there is actually the head of a um, railroad spike works reasonably well and then we've got an ash dump here that's made real simply with a counterweight this is going to keep it closed while it's um you know under the the while you're forging and you can just kick it up like that and dump any ash that you've got out um this is not a bad way, and, and it's a cheap way, especially if you have a welder. You can make one of these certainly a lot cheaper than you can buy um, a fire pot from Centaur Forge. Um, where you tend to run into difficulties, um, obviously depending on your welding skills, I think we originally had a plate here, and we had some bolts going down into uh, the plate, right? You've got those already built into the brake rotor. Um, but it's gotten hot, it's melted away, it's had problems, it's rusted. Um, we then went in and tried and weld it directly there. Our welding job apparently was not great, so I was having to replace this one because it's got a substantial gap there and it was shooting hot coals out the bottom. I will probably clean this up and try and re-weld it and repair it and see if somebody wants it. Um, right, there's no, it's, it's perfectly usable. It's a reasonable fire pot. Um, where you really run into difficulties with these are the clinker breaker is not as great but more than that um, it's the shape of the fire pot so if we look at these two fire pots this fire pot um, it's nicely angled here that's going to tend to send your coal down to the edges you're not going to get a lot of stuff building up around the corners um, this makes for a substantially better um, fire. It is nice and heavy duty. These tend to not hold up for quite as long, although if you take care of them, they certainly can last uh, quite a while. Um, these are, are super easy to put together. These take a little bit more work, um, but really it's this shape of the fire pot, right? This is a little, a little on the shallow side. Um, so your fire tends to sit up a little bit high. It doesn't funnel things in toward the middle of the fire. So your coal management and stuff like that gets a little bit more challenging, not undoable, but a little bit harder. And yeah, I find, you know, I'm, I'm, you struggle just a little bit more with these fires, right? These are kind of designed so that if you've got a good fire going, that's nice and clean, you don't have a lot of clinker in there and you put a piece of steel across the top of it right here, you're going to be sort of right in that sweet spot um, up above where most of the oxygen is coming in, uh, but not too high. Um, you know, if you want to do forge welding, you're kind of coming in at exactly the right spot here. Um, these brake rotors, um, they sit a little bit low, so you're going to need to be a little higher up off the fire. But this is, like I said, it's not a bad option. You do see people sometimes use um, brake drums because they feel like the, the rotors are too thin and they they are a little a little too thin right we can see that 
here you can see we've got a little bit of extra um, depth to it. Uh, and so they'll switch over to a brake drum, which is gonna be, you know, another few inches deep. Um, brake rotor over a brake drum is the way to go. You start getting way too deep, you, you wind up burning a ton of coal um, when you do that. Um, so here you go, two, two different style fire pots, uh, one brand new purchase from Centaur Forge, um, and then a homemade one out of a brake rotor. Um, if you've got the money for it, you know, and, and you're gonna be using this for the next 10, 20, 30 years, which this will certainly hold up that long, um, the 320 bucks for it gets very cheap on a per fire basis. And I do think that there is a lot of value in having the right tool for the right job. And if it's saving me, you know, pennies per time I go out and forged, um, to not have, you know, to have a homemade uh, version rather than a um, really purposefully designed version, I'd rather spend the extra few cents per fire and have a forge that is going to hold up um, for me in the long, long run and is going to give me exactly the sort of fire that I want. So hopefully this was uh, interesting for you guys. Uh, we will do some videos um, coming out shortly where we build the whole forge stand and everything and we put this into it uh, and show you guys starting up the first fire. So you've got a whole series on how to build your own um, reasonably cheap um, you know, coal forge. So see you guys again soon. Thanks so much.